Check, check. <laughs> the microphone is on. All right, y'all, it's time for a fresh tepid takes. Tepid takes are my way of talking about new beauty releases on my channel. I call them tepid takes instead of hot takes because I lean towards buying most things. Like if they interest me, I think that they're worthy of a review. I swear I've had a normal amount of coffee this morning. I had a normal amount of sleep last night. I just can't make words. I usually buy things with review in mind, not because I think that certain things belong in my collection. So if you are new to my channel or new to this type of video, do not, please do not feel any kind of urge to keep up with me and my buying habits because they are motivated by a completely different set of priorities than the typical makeup hobbyist. So with all that said, we are going to open up Trend Mood. As always, thank you to Trend Mood for existing. And there are pages out there like that that are not Trend Mood, but Trend Mood's the one that I kind of go by. So let's go in Japan. So I did take a peek at Trend Mood already to see if there were even enough new releases to warrant a new video. And I found myself having all sorts of thoughts and urges. So we're gonna start in reverse chronological order, starting with the first one that I care about. How interesting. I was gonna say the first thing that I really feel interested in talking about is the new Westman Atelier release, but then I saw right above that that Sofia Vergara is coming out with her own beauty line and I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna be skincare or something that doesn't really feel particularly considered. Pardon me for making assumptions, but it's complexion product. So it's empty compact case, which has a replaceable CC creamy compact refill SPF 50. So it's like a, you know, skin tint or whatever. And then there's a mineral SPF 50 plus a CC cream perfecting fluid, and then a Solaria infusion antioxidant booster. I have no idea what any of this is, but it sounds like Sofia Vergara has given it at least a little bit of time and thought and energy and putting it into, you know, something that doesn't feel like she's just slapping her name on someone else's product. So it's called Toti, T-O-T-Y, and it looks cute. I don't know. I think I was skeptical about Rare Beauty when it first came out, but like, who knows? Maybe we have Sofia Vergara as the next, maybe she already had beauty stuff. I'm not really sure, but maybe she's kind of the next big visionary in the beauty space. It remains to be seen. Okay, so this is the first thing that kind of caught my attention as I was scrolling, and that is the new stuff from Westman Atelier. So they've come out with a new shade in the Beauty Butter Matte Powder Bronzer, which makes me want to pull mine back out because it's really pretty, but that shade range was abysmal. And it still kind of isn't great. I think, that, is that like just two shades now total? But like, that's a pretty good deep color that they came up with. It looks like it would be pretty good. I don't know. I still think that bronzer is an extension of your complexion routine and so I don't think that like one to two shades in a line is you know a good thing I think that you know we need almost as many as we do for like a skin tint line or something but it's a beautiful formula it's such a pretty formula it's so like creamy even though it's a powder I should probably pull it back out you know especially as we've been talking about like my forthcoming bronzer video the other thing that they have come out with here is a liquid super loaded highlighter so I was not a huge fan I owned the super loaded highlighter in Pot de Pesh, and like I've seen my friend Steph of Beauty and Hyped make it work as sort of an illuminating blush, but I found it to kind of gum up my makeup. It's too stiff of a formula to like apply evenly over blush or something. I just could not, it just wasn't for me. And I put this up on my Instagram and asked y'all if you were interested and it was like 70, 30 towards no. Maybe if they have it at Sephora, I'll swatch it so that I can see if any of the shades actually even functions as a highlighter for me. But like, am I a highlighter girl at all? Not really. And if I want one, like the Rare Beauty ones, although this is complete confetti on the inside. They're all smashed. Like all you have to do is use this and it shatters. But that's like a true blue highlighter, you know, and you can get one of those at the drugstore. You don't need to pay what, you know, $58 for a little, you know, tube of liquid. I could mix this with a really nice skin oil or something like that and make my own. Like I've seen dozens of people do it on the internet. It's not rocket science. I mean, I'm sure there's more to it than that, but I don't think that this is necessarily for me unless y'all are like, khaki. We need a review! Okay, so I'm on the Bare Minerals PR list, or at least I think I am, and the last time I got a Bare Minerals box in the mail was like a week ago, and I really thought it was gonna be the new bronzers, and it was just some like of their normal powder, and I was like, okay, like I appreciate it, but like, do I need to buy the new bronzers? And then they're gonna come, and then I'm gonna have two. That's the whole thing I'm trying to avoid, is to not have doubles of things. Anyway, they're coming out with a new highlighter. So this is a two-in-one blush and highlighter. So the other one is a bronzer. I guess this is a bly lighter. And it combines the rosiness of a blush with the lit from within glow of a highlight in one step. So they're basically like highlighters that are coming in colors. So 
very similar to this, you know, the Rare Beauty, and maybe they won't smash when you use them. So I don't know, maybe we'll do like an updated Bare Minerals video because I do love so many things from Bare Minerals and they have sent me so many things that, you know, we could combine into a face of makeup. And if nothing else, these look beautiful. They look really, really beautiful, even though they're like, you know, not necessarily the type of product that I'm looking out for. You know what I mean? I'm not watching for new highlighters usually, but it's summertime and I can put myself in the mood, you know, <laughs> if we need to. And I do think that these look really even, you know, they look really, and that's the thing about Bare Minerals is they're not out here making things that are like hunky chunky glitter. They're all going to, you know, focus on skin, 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 even if it is, you know, a better than real life kind of glow. So if I'm going to buy a highlighter. I could definitely see it being a Bare Minerals highlighter this summer. Okay, Gisu, Gisu is putting out a shimmer lip oil. It is the new lip oil golden shimmer glow. They love to say honey infused. Let me tell y'all, I saw this and I thought, yep, honey. It's gonna smell like honey. It's gonna be awesome. And if I've harped on this too many times, please forgive me. You can just, you know, hit the little L button and just skip ahead. This doesn't smell like honey. It smells like fry oil and I still use it because it's a pretty good lip oil, but like why couldn't the honey infusion translate into making it smell kind of better than the way that it's, it just, it feels like such an afterthought because it's such a cute package, you know, like it's so cute and the, the new one comes in this too and it is shimmery. It's appealing looking, but like it's not a good enough product for me to go and spend the same amount of money that I spent on this, which it's not cheap. I don't know how much it is. I think it's almost $30 or something like that. And it's in glass. Oh, lovely. But it's like, they really just, stop short of making the product great. The formula is nourishing and it's pretty, but a Clarins lip oil, it is not. So I won't be buying the shimmery one because I can tell you right now, it's gonna be the same, but just with shimmers. <laughs> I can't help but get vibes from the new Dior Fall 2023 preview images. It's these quints and I have bought two Dior quints. And I feel like you could have deja vu thinking you're watching Tom's channel because I think that they've said the exact same thing. I think that we both on instinct in our own separate lives bought the same Dior quince at like one point or another. They were so disappointing that I think I returned, I kept one and gave it away and then I returned the other one because it was just like that bad. It's just that they're like, they're sooty to me. And I think that that's just a, it's a you like it or you don't kind of thing with luxury eyeshadow formulas. And they all tend to have a little bit of satin to them. And so it's like for the ways that I like to manipulate light and color by like temperature and finish, they don't differ enough in temperature and they don't differ enough in finish to like achieve what I would want to achieve in a quint. You know, I want it to be something that's concise, like five shades that really like nail together a look and I can travel with it or whatever. And they've just always disappointed me in that respect. They, they'll just be like too similar of shades, too dark, too light, whatever. There's just not enough contrast in either the textures or the colors. But I cannot help but be a little bit drawn to this one on the bottom right because it does actually look like it could be, although it's not exciting, it's not exciting. Okay. There's nothing exciting happening there. The colors do draw me in just in terms of like, Hey, there's contrast there. That's kind of cool. Still, I'm just not, I don't think that I'm going to be buying a Dior Quint anytime soon, just because for the money, if I'm going to recommend a luxury eyeshadow, it's going to be Surratt. Like it's just, oh, it's really hard to beat a Surratt eyeshadow formula. If you're going for that very evenly pigmented, silky kind of finish eyeshadow, like Surratt's the way to go. Dior, you're not gonna convince me. But that blush, okay. <laughs> I was like, why does that blush look so familiar? It looks like the new Dior Backstage Rosy Glow in Rosewood. <laughs> I, it's like they knocked themselves off a little bit. Isn't that funny? So yeah, it, it's still, it's giving me like really good warm fall vibes, which is a good thing. Fall is the easiest color story to adapt to makeup because it's so like skin tone native. It's a bunch of like browns, you know? <laughs> So um, that's why I find it so appealing. It just looks like it'd be easy to use, but I have a lot of it in my collection. Givenchy, I have come to enjoy partaking in some of their products lately. I really like the skincare and concealer. And even though I still have a chip on my shoulder about the fact that the Prism Libre powder, mine like locked like unusably, but it, these lip balms have intrigued me when they first came out. There was like a clear and a black, right? But they were, a, 
pH adapting. And there's no slideshow here to show what these look like on in terms of swatches. And so I'm like, are these pH adapting too? Because uh, we're all a broken record at this point. The pH adapting stuff all turns the same color. It just turns hot pink. And like, I want a black lip balm. You know what I mean? I want a deep plum lip balm that's like a sheer wash of deep plum that's going to like change the temperature of my natural lip color. Not something that looks like that in the bullet. And then I put it on and it just turns off pink because of the pH adaptive. But they also have this blush, the Prism Libre, lib, good grief, I cannot say that word. Prism Libre blush. I don't know, it's such a gimmick because it's mixing four shades together to make one shade kind of thing. And like, I'm sorry. I'm here for it. <laughs> like, you can get me with a cool color theory gimmick because this one's got like this deep mauve thing to it, but it's also got this hot pink, pale pink thing to it. I don't know. I love that the blush comes with a puff. Can y'all tell me, have you ever applied a loose powder blush with a powder puff? I can't imagine what kind of chaos that would create. But anyway, yeah, I don't mind by that. I mean, Too Faced has come out with a Cosmic Crush eyeshadow palette. This does not really appeal to me. To their credit, they do look a little bit deep. Too Faced. Like, can someone just give like one clap? One golf clap for Too Faced for making something that has some saturation to it. Clarins, which I've just recently fallen in love with. I'm like the last one to get the memo, but they're comfort lip oils. I love them. This says available now, Lip Perfector 2-in-1 Lip and Cheek Color Bomb. The, th 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 the thing that I have here is that these are $28 and that is a drugstore tube. That is the cheapest packaging I could imagine. I already can tell that I would not feel any kind of luxury tingles when I used that, even if it is absolute lip and cheek caviar on the inside. The packaging is repellent to me. So that is why I would not be buying it because it's not a wildly luxury price, but I would at least expect not that. Just not that. Farsali's back? Did they go completely away? I was not up on the Farsali thing. So Farsali, I feel like was like pre-TikTok. It was like the TikTok phenomenon of Instagram when Instagram was still TikTok. And it was like the way to get somebody to click through on your short form content was to take this like unicorn liquid whatever it was. What was it called? It was like unicorn juice. I don't know. And they would just like squirt it all over their face and it was like kind of iridescent. I watched Robbie De Christie use it and that was the only person I ever saw legitimately review it. And she said it was wildly sticky and that it was wildly fragranced, like to the point that like she couldn't get thoughts out. But either way, they're coming out with a uh, new novelty number one, Luminous Peptide Serum Illuminate and Plump from Farsali, a hydrating peptide serum enriched with micro droplets of illuminating pigments. The delicate and melts on skin, invoking a luminous glow filter, lightweight formula, not only hydrates and plumps, but is also supported by a potent anti-collusion peptide complex, meticulously crafted using patented microfluidic technology, our signature blend of nourishing oils and pigments are encapsulated into microbubbles, ensuring a fresh release of modification. $59? Wow. I don't know what their price point was before, but that's kind of expensive. I don't know. It has the micro encapsulation that you see in the Le Beige skin tint, the rose ink skin tint, the Le Beige everything. My camera cut me off. I'm not going to buy it. It does look like Moira Cosmetics. This is a brand that I have not tried, but I see on my friend Lauren May's channel quite a lot. And it does look like Moira has come out with a full range of new shimmery eyeshadows. I can't tell. It says highly pigmented features of shimmery finish glides on effortlessly providing long lasting wear without creasing or fading. Everlust shimmer cream shadow. So I'm wondering if these are creams like a Tom Ford cream or their creams like a Coolfi cream, you know, that kind of jiggly cream, which I actually really like, or if they're a cream like, you know, a traditional cream shadow, right? Like a NYX or something like that, you know what I mean? Where it's kind of like a paste that you pick up with your finger. I would be interested in trying these because Moira is a more affordable brand also. So they're like 750 each. Oh, and Sophie's got a 10% off coupon with Trend Mood. So yeah, don't want me to try Moira. Maybe we need to make a Moira order and just do a, do a deep dive on Moira because they seem really cool and Lauren makes them look absolutely gorgeous. Not a Finding Nemo collection. See, here's the problem, right? It's like, I don't want any of this. This is for Makeup Revolution, but also so, you know, it's near and dear to my heart because my child is obsessed with Finding Nemo. So not that he needs make, he doesn't need makeup. My friend, Rachel, Rachel Ellen Rose did send some of the Wet n Wild Sesame Street collection to me. And one of them is a brush case. That's just this kind of freestanding Elmo that you unzip the head. And when I tell you he loves that thing so much, there's a time and a place, but I don't think this one's it. He doesn't need a liquid blush. His cheeks are perfectly rosy on their own. I am only going to feign fatigue as much is necessary for this, but why, why are we making denim a makeup aesthetic? Like, I, I don't get it. Like, 
denim is just a fabric. Like we don't need to bring it back. Like, yeah, in the early 2000s, Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears showed up on a red carpet wearing a full denim matching outfit combo, okay? But like denim has existed before that and since that. Why are we being like, denim is the way to bring back the, the 2000s, like, or the 2010s or whatever, like, it's just, denim's just, it's just denim, denim's just denim. Okay, here is like a trend, it's a tr trend alert. <laughs> I've identified a trend and that doesn't necessarily mean it's a cool trend It's just something that is trending like I'm seeing a lot of it and it's these matte lip balms Okay, I bought the Bisu balm from Violette a while back. This is the Refai Beauty Lip Blur. They're these very silicone-y, low-ish pigment blotted looking matte lipsticks or la you know, lip balms essentially Here's my hang up with them because I love the idea. I love the idea of that just like undone, instant French girl kind of thing, you know, where you put it on and you're like, wow, this is what I've been trying to achieve halfway through my lipstick wearing off, you know, but it never does this. The problem for me is that they dry my lips out. Like the Bisu Balm, I was just like, you know what I mean? And, and then it opened up in my purse and then it collected untold amounts of nonsense on it. And then Natalie and Steph watched me do something unspeakable, which was throw away a Violette lipstick in a hotel hallway. Yeah, these aren't for me. I get it and I really get the appeal of it. And I think that these are pretty interesting colors if they are all a little too pink for me. That actually is the thing that I have noticed with all of my experiences with Refai. Even if, and these swatches don't, but even if the swatches online look like they're going to be pleasantly grungy or cool toned or desaturated or whatever, they're not going to. Jess, Hunt, the owner of Refai. She has an aesthetic and it is bronze. Even when I bought a taupe lip liner from her, it was like, it was just like a bronzer color. You know what I mean? It was not taupe by any means. It was like a light golden red. Yeah, I won't be doing this. This is a cool thing. I'm just not the target audience for it. I actually even really like the, the packaging. I like that it's kind of this big chunky lip balm because it's like, oh, I could use that on my cheeks too. But they claim that it will keep lips feeling moisturized and nourished. They can put all the moisturizing, nourishing ingredients in there that they want. But the fact that the formula has to be balanced out with so much silicone in order to give you that matte blurred lip I'm sorry, there's never gonna be enough nourishment for me. Plus, I just think I look better with a glossy lip. I just look healthier. Ooh, 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 I'm wearing this today. This is the new Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Soothing Serum Skin Tint Foundation with peptides and ceramides. Finally, Danessa Myricks has made a complexion product that is what I need. That doesn't mean that her other complexion products have been bad. They just haven't been catered to my tastes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they were either really high coverage or they were for a different skin type than mine. This is just right squarely in the middle of what I like to wear on my face. And I've been wearing it every day since I got it. And it's so pretty and it doesn't have a fragrance. I know, it's awesome. Like it's just, it's it just hits all the marks. And the shade match is outstanding. I can wear as little of it or as much of it as I want. Obviously it's not gonna go to full coverage, but I guess my point is I can wear it selectively on my face. It just you know, feathers really nicely, it looks like skin, and that's what I want out of a skin tint. This is just lovely. I feel pretty equipped to, you know, give y'all like my thoughts on it, because I've been wearing it for like, what, four or five days straight at this point? And oh, but I've also been wearing it with this. We're really <laughs> digressing, but like, I don't know how much of the lovely, pleasing, all day long performance can be also chalked up to the fact that the new Naturium UV Reflect Antioxidant SPF 50 is gorgeous. Oh, well, it's so pretty now, it's chemical. So I mean, you know, choose your fighter. Like some people are chemical sunscreen people, some people are physical sunscreen people, but this is avobenzone, homosalate, and octosalate, and it doesn't look like anything else I've ever used. It is this like wildly thin liquid. It's so beautiful. Whoa! So yeah, I just love it. It behaves very similarly, I feel like, if it's like if the Victoria Beckham primer were an SPF, but it's got a little more oil to it than that. And it doesn't smell like SPF either. I don't know how they did it because even an SPF lip balm will like smell like SPF, chemical SPF, and this doesn't. So yeah, this combo right here, that is what has given me this glow today. So I don't 
know if like hard candy has always had this packaging and like now it just happens to look like something that I recognize, you know, as something that's more recently in my memory, but these hard candy Glostopia lip repair oils are beautiful looking, but they look both like the rare beauty and also the pleasing packaging. And I will never say that Harry Styles is someone who has completely original ideas. I do not know. I do not know, but they do look similar to his nail polishes. I just, I think that these look really, really pretty. Like there's, it's kind of crazy because you're thinking about like the Clarins thing that we talked about earlier, where it's like, it's going to be $28 for a lip balm that you can use on your cheeks. And it looks like it, you know, fell out of a forgotten drugstore rack. And then you look at this hard candy packaging and you're like, it can't be that expensive to make cool packaging because that's pretty. Like, I wanna hold that in my hand. I might need one of those. And if it's a lip oil, oh, I would love to like compare it to my other lip oils in my collection because as you can clearly tell, I have paid a fortune for many of them and these are gonna be $8. <laughs> and they're available now. Maybe I'll just order all of them. That's a me thing to do. Oh, Boy Smells has come out with a banana pudding candle. So I don't know if y'all follow Landon Talks, but he talks about like Southern cultural colloquialisms. Like that's just what his entire presence on the internet is. And he just did this Southern dessert showdown where it was literally like a bracketed list. I was shocked as a native Southerner to see that banana pudding was in the top two with peach cobbler. I was like, I don't know those Southerners. P banana pudding? Maybe. I guess if there's enough vanilla wafers in there, but like I'm not a banana pudding girl and I certainly don't want a candle that smells like it. No, thank you. No, thank you. Kylie Cosmetics has lost the plot and I think that she knows it. The episodes lately of the Kardashians, which I do watch because they do calm me. It's just, they was like my pregnancy comfort watch. And ever since then, I they just calm me. Kylie even willingly admits that she has taken kind of a back seat in management of her brands because of being a mom and like, sure you know, but that, you know, she's excited to kind of get back in the saddle as it were. And like, I'm excited to see what it looks like when she gets back in the saddle of her brand because these new tinted butter balms feel pretty phoned in to me. We have two new shades in the cloud paint. Yes, we do. From Glossier, we have Wisp and Soar. It really bugs me that in that image, they're making the two products kiss one another and mix together. I wanna to take something and just cut it off so that you don't get one and the other. I don't want them mixed together. I'm sure they're great. I don't need to review a cloud paint to tell you that cloud paint is a good product, because it is. Hi, can I just say, I am team, I'm tired of talking about Hailey Bieber. I'm just tired of hearing about Hailey Bieber. She's not my icon, okay? Like I just, I shouldn't even say nothing against her. I prefer not to care who Hailey Bieber is and the internet keeps trying to make me care who Hailey Bieber is and I just don't. I'm not going to. Okay. Oh no. An overpriced eyebrow pencil? Why does that tantalize me so much? It's like when Henry Bendel was still open, I used to love looking at like overpriced keychains. I don't know what it is about me where I'm just like, ooh, what's that tiny thing that I could pay too much money for? You know what I mean? By comparison, it's not gonna be that much money because it's so tiny. So it's like, there's just kind of like a luxurious appeal to using it. Like I used the Surratt eyebrow pencil today which has disappeared because of course it has. I, I don't know if y'all watch me. I edit it out all the time. Basically every time I finish using a product, I just chuck it across the room never to be seen again. So that's probably why. But Dior has, you know, they're coming out, they're coming out with bright brow, brow, brow. They're coming out brow pencils. What did I just sound like? Forky, I sounded like Forky. Yeah, I love Forky. Anyway, so yeah, they're $34, like wildly expensive for a brow pencil, I don't know. And I've got brow pencils coming out my ears. There was a time where I was buying brow pencils, just like there was a time where I was buying sunscreens. And now it's just not the case. These things ebb and flow. So maybe this will come across my plate at some point, but I like it. I think it's cute. I wonder if it's heavy. No. No, no, and I hate being this person who gets on here and I'm just like so cynical, but I'm like reading this as, you know, an ex-hairstylist, I was a hairstylist for a long time and IGK makes some really cool products. They're really, really fragrance, but they're cool. They have collabed not with Emma Chamberlain, no. They have collabed with Chamberlain Coffee, which is widely known to be bad coffee. At least her like coffee bags, you know, that you can steep to make iced coffee with or whatever. They're just unanimously panned. But she's got so much money, it doesn't matter. And sure, she's a child, but like we can start treating her like a millionaire because she is, okay? It says direct flight st style preserving matcha dry shampoo. Friends, 
friends, Romans, countrymen, why do we need matcha, which is not coffee? It is a caffeinated beverage, but it is not coffee. I have not been keeping up with Chamberlain Coffee to know if she is now putting out matcha, which I'm assuming she is, but I mean this in all sincerity. Please answer me if you know. Why do we need matcha in dry shampoo? I just want to know. All right, I'm going to close with this. A message to Tarte. Just because all you have is a hammer does not mean that everything is a nail, okay? I mean, I'm sure that this is a, an okay palette. This is a very practical looking palette for someone. You know, we've got some light shades, some medium shades, some deep shades, some excitement, some mattes, whatever. To me, for a $49 palette in the year of our Lord 2023, to just put what looks like a pillow you found at Home Goods as the backdrop and just writing the name on the front of the palette does not make me excited to interact with that palette. It does not make me want to buy a $49 eyeshadow palette. Again, that's not everybody's gig. I get that. I get that. From a practicality standpoint, I'm sure that they're making their money. I'm sure that someone is buying this because it does look useful. But like, can you do a little bit more to entertain me with your packaging, not just because it's boring, but because it's the same flavor of boring you've been doing the whole time. The whole time. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, I would argue it's just broke because of neglect and disrepair. <laughs> like, do something else. This really just looks like someone took zero seconds to design it. I would like to feel as though you put some thought and energy into the product that I am hopefully going to receive the thought and energy from while I'm using it. So I can think of a lot better ways to spend $49 on eyeshadow. Oh my God, that's so cute. Oh, <gasps> wait, why do they get me on this? Why do they get me on this? I have never wanted a Dyson air dryer, hair dryer thing. I've never wanted the air curler. I've never wanted the flat iron but they came out with these like 1960s looking color stories on them. That's like light pink coral and turquoise. Why do I want it now? Oh, it's only in Japan. Well, that's A, y'all get all the best stuff and B, good. Now I can't buy it because that would have been embarrassing to only want it because it was a cool color. So thank you for saving me from myself, but it is so pretty. <laughs> so anyway, y'all, I hope you liked this. If you did, I will put my playlist up here of my other Tepid Takes videos for y'all to check out. Yes, they might be things that have already come out, you know, a long time ago, but it's still fun to watch. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Please like the video if you liked it. And uh, I love y'all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.